What's up, my Letwe Army? Welcome back to the Leduc Letwe channel, the best Letwe channel on YouTube. And this week, we're doing another episode of Fight Narration. I enjoy doing these. It brings back a lot of memories. Last week, we did my first fight in Japan against Poke. If you can watch it here, I think. Uh, it, was, uh, it was a really special moment for me to go fight in Japan because of the, of the history of this country with martial arts and uh, especially bringing... Uh, let's wait to the next level like this. It was a very special moment for me fighting in the curriculum hall. And uh, uh, this week, we're doing my third fight in Japan. It was actually my third straight title defense for the open weight title, the golden belt. And uh, the added bonus, though, was that we're fighting for the open weight title for let's wait in Japan, the ILFJ, the International Let's Wait Federation in Japan. Have the bell, have the bells here. Um, so this was, uh, you know, obviously added pressure for me. Defending my golden belt, but also getting a new one, another title um, against a, a very worthy opponent. So, uh, so initially, I was actually supposed to fight Cyrus Washington for that fight, um, and I knew at one point in my career I was going to have to fight him because of his history with Tuntu Min, Tutu Sagaman, and uh, what he's accomplished in Litwe. I just didn't know when it was going to happen. So I was getting really ready for that, but then he pulled out of the fight because of a, of a hand injury. So uh, I think a month before, they found a replacement, a uh, worthy opponent, Super Muay Thai champion, uh, Nin Mun Kun Sutsakun Jim. Um, and I think here we have the article from Myanmar, Myanmar Times, yeah. So just actually, you see on that fight, he fought uh, my, uh, my, brother, my brother, rest in peace, Matthew Richardson. Um, so basically, they fought at Super Muay Thai and Matthew uh, lost, I think, yeah. And... Uh, so I had a lot of uh, I had a lot of uh, pressure because I had wanted to avenge my brother that fought him, and uh, so we ended up yeah. So that was the replacement, and he was uh, I remember at the wins we don't see that in the video, but at the wins he was he was actually like taking pictures with the with the, the belt the Lithuanian Japan belt, and he was uh, um, you know I heard the, the translator saying oh I'm gonna get that belt around my waist. He was really like cocky, and uh, he wanted. He wanted to, to take away what's mine, and there was no fucking way it was going to happen. So um, I actually uh, do my usual, you know, when we sh when we shake hand, I say good luck. It doesn't mean shit, but just like it's like my tradition. I say good luck. It's like the kiss of death, you know. And like back, you do a kiss, and then you get you get killed. That's the same thing. So I uh, I uh, I have I, there was no there was no way I was I was leaving Japan without the new golden belt japan belt there was no fucking way so yeah you see that's the that's the uh that's the picture of us so that was at at the curriculum hall and we're just doing the the face off he's he just has a, a face you wanted to punch so yeah he was uh like uh i don't know i think we're like both 25 i'm not sure we're very uh ready let's fucking go I, I was just watching this. I want to fight again. I want to. I want to go in the ring right now. So let's go see the fight. Oh, and by the way, at the beginning, I said welcome to my Lithuanian army. My Lithuanian army is is uh, is very special to me. It's like a, a big family around the world, um, and basically everybody that supports Lithuanian, everybody that promotes it to his friends around the world, that that's basically pioneering Lithuanian, the art of Lithuanian worldwide. A lot of you have met during my seminars around the world. Some of you have never met, but you drop comments, you drop likes on Facebook, Instagram. So I appreciate it, and you guys are all part of the army. So. If you're looking for a purpose in life in martial art, you can stop right now. You can join the Lithuanian Army and be part of this worldwide movement. And it's as simple as becoming an ambassador for Lithuania, wherever you're at in the world. So uh, hopefully one day I'll be uh, I'll be a new country doing a seminar. We'll shake hands. We'll do the Likamun together. <laughs> ah! For everybody from the Lithuanian Army, welcome back. And everybody that's joining us, you guys are welcome in. All right, guys. So let's go on YouTube. So... This is the official channel, Let's Win Japan, 2.1 million views. That's the one. Uh, but before, I want to say, for the first two fights, we fought at the Curriculum Hall, which is the legendary venue. But then for the the, the title fight, um, it was the first time there was a Let's Win title fight. And uh, we uh, we actually, the, the Let's Win was getting so popular in Japan that uh, the Curriculum Hall was too small. So they rented for that fight. The first time we were going out of the Curriculum Hall, we uh, we did, uh, they rented across the across the tokyo dome it was the tokyo dome city hall so the city hall is bigger and more grandiose with like amphitheater like uh, higher seats it was pretty cool so for that for that fight it was at the the city hall in tokyo dome 
pretty, pretty cool. So let's go. Um, all right. I don't want to add the Q. All right. There it is. So for this fight, I wanted to do something else for my entrance, build off what I did with Pokey with the mask. And uh, while we were getting ready for, um, <laughs> while you were getting ready for the, the fight, I went to a, a shop and I saw the thing that I wanted. Um, so I got the Grim Reaper. TDC, that's Tokyo Dome City Hall, yeah. With Winton, a corner. Dave Ledoc. So now they're. A lot of you message me about about the wedding. I'll I'll speak about it one day. <laughs> Talk about the fight with Tintun. Just look at his scalp. Oof, uh, isn't a good elbow. Elbow to the top of the head. So now they're basically saying, telling the story that led up to the uh, the fight in the title fight in Japan. So, Tuntumin, Poke, and then, boom, and then they're talking about, I think, about the Yilmaz. Yeah. That's a nice combo. Boom, elbow, elbow again, boom, then knee jab. So that was Lithuanian Japan 3. Fucking epic fight. Shout out to you, Adam. Strong guy. And then there it is. Nice leg. That was a nice leg kick there. Yeah. Oh. Nice kick. I was like, okay, the guy likes to... Likes to brawl, likes to... Sh like a bit cocky. Nice elbows. And uh, yeah, his team was all uh, all ties, and they were they were like, and obviously there was the, this big rivalry, and still omnipresent forever since the town of time, since uh, Myanmar invaded invaded uh, at the time it was called Burma, since Burma invaded uh, Siam and destroyed the the capital it was called Ayatuya before before it was the capital uh, before it was called uh, Thailand. You now there's this big rivalry of martial arts, so Letui has remained the same with. Uh, you know, untouched rules, KO to win, um, Bernacle, headbutts allowed. Um, so what, do I, what am I missing? Bernacle, headbutts, all takedowns allowed. There's the injury timeout. And basically all this, while Muay Thai has basically added gloves, removed the headbutts, added a scoring system. So um, the fact that most Thai people, when they come in, the best they can do is a draw. Uh, most, uh, you know, so as a so actually, when the Thai people, Thai champions, when they come to to Letway, the most one of the best thing they can do is usually a draw, uh, or they get stopped because of the the, the headbutts and the pain threshold. So basically, there's this big rivalry. When you know when he was it was announced that he was going to fight me in Japan, it was basically the art of nine limbs against the art of eight limbs. You know, Le, uh, Letway against Muay Thai. So there was a lot of pressure for him. So he, that's why he wanted the belt so bad. Okay, that's his engine. Okay, so he's coming. Okay, so he's coming first. Twenty-two, sixty fights. Now it's me. <laughs> Dave 
Evil Duck. The Grim Reaper. <laughs> the Japanese comedy makes you even better. They loved it. So guys, let me show you what I found. I looked into my stuff and I was uh, very surprised and very happy <laughs> that I still have this. Let me show you. Ah! Fuck yeah, I still have it. The Samurai Mask, first fight in Japan, still have it. That was good quality and and what a day. So still have the mask and still have. <laughs> the Grim Reaper. <sighs> Guys, I have, I still fucking have it. I can't believe it. I even have the even found the the thing that I wear. Let me see. Wow. <laughs> so happy when I I saw that we kept it. I have to do something with this. A lot of people like actually ask me over the years like if they can get some artifacts, some memorabilia. We'll see. Let me think about something. But uh, yeah, we still have it. So let's continue. So you enter. Let's do it. 25. So yeah, he was 22. I'm 25. They're not used to the headbutt and the, in the clinch. And they actually, they're so hard-headed and patriotic toward their, their art because, you know, they think that Mutai is they so, it's so good, it's the best. Well, not if you have all limbs allowed in the clinch. It's it's actually, it's uh, lacking. The, the Mutai clinch is lacking. It's not realistic. You need to be able to do headbutts. It's a very natural strike. <laughs> and uh, like it's like they're stubborn. They don't want. You, they don't even want to train it or something. Like oh, I can be. I can beat them without the headbutt. No, you can't. It's important. <laughs> Always relax before the fight. Keep your energy for the fight. Like Amun, I was still fairly new doing my yay, perfecting it. Every practice, actually practicing it before the fight. That's part of my warm up. You you dance to practice it. So it was a bit slow motion there, but it's part of the history, part of the, the journey. The more intricate your Litwayi is, the more deemed you, you, you're of, a, of a good fighter you are. So, you know, if you have a strong Litwayi, a strong warrior dance before the fight, it's not your first rodeo. You've been, you've fought before, you've fought many times and you're getting better. So my Litwayi actually got better over the years. And if your challenger doesn't do it, it's like, okay. So he's not even trying to, he's not even trying to, to, to get into the culture. He's not even, you know, he didn't even do his Lekamun, I think. He's supposed to challenge me with my Lekamun. That's how stubborn they are. The, the Thais are stubborn and they don't want to... Uh, I even saw Thais doing their, their white crew, uh, going around the, the ropes doing this. And that's their demise. Like, look at me kick, I check, but I don't feel fucked up. Boom. I tried to, to lunge with a headbutt. <laughs> the ref. <laughs> he, he defended well there because I was really going with a lot of punches, elbows, and headbutts. I was like pump up, up, and he he really moved well. The headbutt missed by not a lot, like an inch. I could have got him right on the nose. He's going for the leg kicks. Like punches are way more favorable than Lithuania. You can cut with one jab not cuz he's used to fighting without with gloves right so you you punch, you you kick way more if you have big pillows in your hand 
if you have if you have gloves, you know it doesn't cut as much, so you're gonna kick. You have no protection on your on your legs, so you don't win lightweight fights with kicks. You want to punch him, you want to elbow him, you want to headbutt him. So I'm going with hands. He's going with. It's really a clash of styles here. I'm trying to. That was a nice jab there. He's just boom. And it does like. You you only know what it feels to have a, a bare knuckle punch, like a punch without glove, without cushion. Oh, I was putting way more gauze that back then. Now I put fuck all. Basically, the more you got, oh, right, there's a headbutt right there coming up. The more gauze you put, the less damage you give to your opponent, and it's protecting your hands too. Like uh, now, I put fuck all. You get it hurts more. Your hands are fucked up, but you fucked up his face. You see, back then I was still like got gauging. Gauging, okay, so I'm, my corner was like putting more gauze, which, oh, that was a nice elbow, and then the headbutt, and one there, and then another one, boom! And he hated, like, he's backing up, look at that, he's like, oh, shit, what? Headbutt? And then the, the butt right there, bang! All my body weight right on the fucking jaw. He's taking his time off. So from the headbutt, he, he was already stabilized, he fucking hated it. I think I got his eyebrows. His eyebrow. I think I, he was already cut. So the headbutt right there. Boom, one, one right there. And then another. But right on the uh, on the left eyebrow. And then he's like pulling back. He's like, what the fuck is that? He's crazy, this guy. What is he doing? Headbutts? And then boom, right there. Jab. So he's, he, that's like a... It's not a jab. It's like a fake kick to punch. Yeah, boom. Put a lot of power in that that because you, you basically all use the leverage from the kick right into your punch fake kick to punch it's very unorthodox not very sexy but it does the job i don't give a fuck about what it looks like that's what most ties you know it's all about looking good because the scoring system in muay thai is all about looking good looking not disbalanced looking like you you're not getting hurt looking it's all about looks it's uh, it's really it's a beautiful art but it's about looking good in the fight. It's about not, you know, not, not uh, being um, disbalanced, looking strong and all this. But he's already swollen on the, on the eyebrow. Uh, see, I put uh, with way too much. Could have, I could have probably. He probably should should not be wake, waking up from that uh, that punch if I didn't have anything. He's putting a bit of gauze, a bit too much gauze. So he's swollen on that cheek or uh, whatever. So you get two minutes to re to get revived. If you, oh yeah, the eyes blood, there's a bit of blood right there. You get two minutes to get revived. If you decide you can stop or you can continue, he's like, yeah, I can go. I'm okay. Let's fucking go. All right, I respect that a lot. Not a lot of guys are able to continue after uh, after getting dropped. And now I'm like, okay, let's go. And there's no way you're getting. He's going for the big elbows. I'm just getting warmed up. Like, I hate the first round usually. Because the first round is to, to get him to, to know him. You know, sometimes you use fakes. Yeah, I landed that spinning elbow right on the on the spine. He's trying again. I missed it. You see, that's why I fucking tried something. I'm like, fuck it, I have to try it. But I think he, he got me with the elbow and I'm cut right now. Fuck. Yeah, like, uh, I felt it right away. Yeah, it's just like, because I tried... Yeah, have, you have to try stuff, right? So I was like, okay, let me go for a, like a really, let, let me overextend for that. Um, I'm, I'm blood. Yeah, you see the blood leaking on my. I'm like, I'm like, I think I'm cut. I just leaned to try uh, to try the elbow, the spinning elbow. But by doing this, he basically did a short elbow. I, don't, I hope they're gonna show it. <laughs> yeah, his left eye is, is, is uh, swollen compared to his right eye. They fucked up his name and my name. Nil, it's Nil Mulkun and me, Dave. Deve. My Japanese name. I can say I can. I could say that at one point in my life, my name was Deve in Japan. <laughs> I was actually well, I was actually listening to "You're Big in Japan," the song 
Because you're big in Japan. Because <laughs> we're headlining the fights in Japan, so it's pretty, uh, pretty cool. And there's nothing better than a Japanese comment team. It's fucking interesting. You don't even understand a word, but you're like. Sorokonna! It's the best. It's like hypnotizing. You, you kind of understand what they're saying, but you don't know what they're saying. So Winton actually, the guy's holding my head right now, he's the he's a former Golden Bell champion, I think at 67 or 70 kg. He had many wars with um, with uh, Tui Mashon, who's the... Uh, Oh my love, she's so concerned. With, she was so concerned before every fight. She hated the before. She loved afterwards when we were counting the money and when we were traveling. All right, now, so I think it's round two. Oh, okay, because okay, so we did the first round, then can take the jab right there, and then we got the timeout. But then the round one ended, so now we're round two, full round two. Okay. Has big legs, uh, strong legs. Like he sees, they're bigger than me. But nice kick. <laughs> I'm laughing. <laughs> all mental. You think you think it hurts me, bro? Don't feel fuck all. See, got, got him in the corner. You see those kicks? Those those kicks count in Muay Thai. Don't give a fuck in Lithuania. He he told me after the fight that he, he was like, I couldn't understand your style. Like you're so. Like, you're not checking, you're not really, like, you're just awkward. I think, I thought that's what the translator meant. It's like, you weird style. But that's what, that's what happens, right? When, when they fight the same, similar type of people all their life, they get used to that. And if you get somebody that's really weird and unorthodox, it puts them out of balance, right? With this jab right there. I think. That's a nice... Oh, that was a nice power jab. He's like, yeah. <laughs> I think it's kind of jab. Give a boom, boom. Good exchange. Very solid exchange. And then I got the elbow. And that's a, it's a good fight. Jab again. Pop right on those. Every time I was doing this, he was like, <laughs> it was bothering him. He doesn't like, he's pretty boy and tight. He doesn't like to, to get touched. Especially bare knuckle, he's not used to that. Oh, he missed it. He tugged right at the right time. That was gonna hurt. You see, again, that he hates the game. Boom! Oh, I missed. Now you're in the zone. Now you're like, okay, let me go for the kill. And the music actually helped. You see, pop, 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 pop. It kind of like the music actually can help you. Oh, again, he hates it. The music dictates your style almost. Ah, oh, right on me. Pa, po, and the hook again to finish it off. He's done. That's it. That's it. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, the music. I did an interview with the guy. He said that the music of uh, Litwe is actually supposed to, on his words, raise the hair of a horse. That was happy. Show respect. My wife is so happy. Uh, the trophy coming up. Very happy to be making history in Japan like this. And the only the re reason I have a little cut on my head is because fucking tried something different you know if i could have played more safe but who cares it doesn't matter because i'm big in japan I'm big in japan <laughs> Visualization, right? I said I was going to get it. He said he was going to get it, but probably 
didn't believe it as much as me. Japan is such an interesting culture. Litwe and Japan International Litwe Federation. Like 2,000 years of history in Burma, in Myanmar, and now, and now in Japan, right? The mecca of, of fighting. And that was the last time my promoter, who's on, is the Arabic looking guy. That was the last time we, after that fight, I cut ties with him. <laughs> he didn't seem very happy to be on the picture. Yes! David Ledaka! <laughs> so guys, this was the fight narration of my third fight in Japan. And uh, I kind of like doing this. I want to do more. It brings back memories. So we might do more. And uh, I saw also a suggestion from somebody, from a, one of our viewers, said um, should do other fights too. So I kind of like the idea too. I might do some, you know, uh, K1 MMA uh, other fights. Maybe you guys can tell me which which fight you would like me to to narrate, and uh, we can maybe squeeze that in in our uh, busy schedule. So um, thank you guys for watching, and uh, welcome to the Letway Army. I love you all. Don't forget to like, subscribe, so we can bring Letway to more people around the world. Because the more eyes we get, the more we can bring the art to the masses and uh, make sure that uh, the country of Myanmar is uh is uh, gets what's due you know the they created the most badass sport to this day that still is alive they can still compete you can still do headbutts you can still fight without gloves all of them those beautiful things combined in one beautiful package and uh and my friends my brothers and sisters in Myanmar are living some uh, very difficult time right now so the the most we can do the best we can do is to really make sure that their culture and their sport and everything um goes across borders borders and everybody's aware of uh, the beautiful culture of Myanmar and Myanmar Litwe. So guys, thank you guys for watching and I'll see you next week.